Thank you, David. We'll officially start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I now <coughs> declare this meeting for July the 10th, 2019, duly open. And we'll proceed right with the uh, agenda. Item number B, approval of regular session minutes of the 26th, 2019. I know, Board, you've had those minutes in draft form and had a chance to review and make changes. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. <clears throat> and before we go to item number C, I'll make a change here in the agenda. I understand that we have new employees here that are to be introduced this morning and I welcome that opportunity to do that. Um, we'll start with the Department of Job and Family Services, if you would, please. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I'm Tim Dick, the Interim Director for Department of Job and Family Services. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, several new employees. Um, we have uh, Christy Mollis, who's uh, joining the child support team and as an investigator three, and she comes to us with both public assistance and child support experience. So we're happy to have her on board. Sarah Israel uh, comes to DJFS after being a stay-at-home mom and a student. And Sarah graduated from Southern State Community College. And uh, she'll be graduating next summer with a degree in social work. And Sarah is in the income maintenance worker three in our public assistance division. Brandy Waits is, uh, has an associate's degree uh, in arts from Southern State Community College. Brandy most recently worked for a bank before joining the Public Assistance Division as an Income Maintenance Worker 3. Pamela Turner has uh, worked for over 20 years in the insurance industry and Pam joins the Public Assistance Division as a Clerical Specialist. Mark Brazone. Mark grew up in New York and graduated with his bachelor's degree in psychology from the State University of New York in New Paltz. Mark is fluent in Polish and is a social service aide too and works in our Children's Services Division. Nice. Kara Miller. Kara graduated from the University of Dayton with her bachelor's degree in psychology. She previously worked as a residential treatment at a residential treatment facility and she is a social service worker three uh, worker in the Children's Services Division. And then finally, Caitlin Tucker. Uh, graduated from Southern New Hampshire University with a, with a bachelor's degree in psychology and prior to joining Children's Services as a social service worker three, she worked as a behavioral unit aide at Goshen Middle School. So we're happy to have them on board. Welcome. Welcome yes. to Claremont County. Yes, welcome. And if you'll stick around for a few minutes here after you sit down, when we introduce the rest of the new employees from Water Resources, we'd like to take a picture. So don't run off just yet <clears throat> water resources department hi steve morning Good morning commissioners how are you today my name is steve nip i'm the assistant director of operations and maintenance for the claremont county water resources and it's my pleasure to introduce three new gentlemen to our staff. First, I want to introduce Wesley Stevens. Wesley will be working with our distribution system, working repairing water lines, fire hydrants, doing the valve work, those type of things. Um, next is Jared Haggerty, who is with our electro maintenance department on the uh, wastewater side, repairing lift stations, operation of lift stations, uh, electrical work, mechanical work. And then last but not least is Matt Fobar, who is with our I&I &I department, who um, they're responsible for doing all the televising of our sewer lines and looking for defaults and, and infiltration. So all three of them have a very important job, and we're really glad to uh, have them on board. 
And while I got this moment for free advertisement, I've got one more position open. So, people out here in the public, if you'd like to come work for a great guy. Um, there you go. What, so, what's the position? And I'll what's see the position that's it's open? It's a technician one for the collection yeah. system. Did, okay. did you ever think about running for office? Uh, no, sir, I haven't. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to Claremont welcome. County. <clears throat> if you guys will come right up here in front and the rest of the, <clears throat> that was the last of the introductions, yes, right? correct. Okay. All right. We'll stay in the shadows. You guys can have the front there. We're going to do the whole group? <laughs> oh my gosh. Absolutely. <laughs> you want to make a couple rows? There you go. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. For sure. Could use their help. <laughs> And, and you guys don't have to run off. I mean, it gets way more exciting. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move right on with today's agenda and item number C. I understand we have a presentation from the village of Chilo, Ohio. Michelle um, Bachman and uh, Ronnie, is it Gittinger? Are, are here for that? It's that? Ronnie Gittinger. There you go. Got it. <laughs> Your faces around here. There you go. How are you guys all doing? Good. Good. Again, I am Ronnie Gittinger and I am Claremont County born and raised. Um, Bethel, New Richmond, Amelia, Milford, and of course now Shiloh. I'm serving as a council person down there with the awesome Michelle Beckman, who is our fiscal officer. Um, so, dear commissioners and citizens, thank you all for giving us a couple minutes to chat and to build up our village. Shiloh is one of the little river villages that we're blessed to have in the county. If you've not visited it, please do so. Um, the county park, oh my gosh, the Shiloh Park, what an awesome thing down there. Um, and we are connected to physically and in heart to that area. Um, having been down there, Steve and I bought a house down there about five years ago. We've now calling it our permanent residence. We have a gem down there, our city hall. Used to be a school. This building has survived floods, wind damage, everything in the world, and age. It's still with us, but it's in desperate need of attention and help. And we're hoping that the county and can help us maintain and, and restore this building. We're hoping to expand in Shiloh. Uh, we have dreams and desires to save that village and to help all of the villages grow. My husband has often said that our villages are the backbone of our country and that we have to take care of those so that they can take care of its citizens and its citizens can take care of the <coughs> county and the state. So on behalf of Shiloh, Please consider any grants or programs that you have that you may introduce us to. Heck, I'm just a title agent. I don't know about all the awesome things that the government has that they can help us with. I did get an opportunity to meet a Mr. Ryan Holiday. He's with our county auditor or our state auditor's office, and he too says he's in the fight for the small villages. So education, financial support, word of mouth anything that you can do to help us help our village and then we in turn promise to help our county would be greatly greatly appreciated so on behalf of the village of shiloh thank you from the bottom of our hearts for helping us help save our village all right and our little building and and, <laughs> and before you leave you mentioned uh shiloh and you you mentioned the park down there uh -huh. for those that if you don't know oh. Hawk 34 dam is yeah. is the uh the park that she's mentioning down there and it is a gem here in claremont county i mean it has a piece of history that many many people don't get an opportunity to see and they don't understand that the ohio river was you know four feet deep and sometimes two feet deep and sometimes completely dry in the summertime and that it wasn't navigable and uh, to see that engineering uh, expertise brought from France to raise the river level to nine feet so it was a navigable waterway in 1925, not really that long ago, is a really 
really neat place to be and and to and learn that Chilo, the port of Chilo, actually Claremont County didn't go out 125. It went the port of Chilo up to Williamsburg. It went up the 133 route. That's why Main Street in Bethel runs up 133 and not down 125. I've learned a lot since I've been there. <laughs> I'm a big history buff. I love our county and the park. Oh my gosh. I mean, just personally, when my husband and I bought our little house, we had no idea that it came with the park. <laughs> so uh, we were impressed to find that out. We're loving it down there and just, you know, we're wanting to try to help keep that village. It's important, guys. It's important to take care of our little villages along with our big cities. It's just important to take care of our county and not to lose, not to look back in 25 years and go, gosh, if only we would have saved that building. We don't want to find ourselves there. And, and you asked for help and we would be remiss in you leaving that podium and not giving you some names that you could contact to find out about those kind of programs. Okay. And those two names would be Andy Kucha and Adele Evans. And Adele Evans is in the back of the room there. Hey, Adele. It's so a pleasure to meet you. That is someone who is well versed on all the programs that are available from CDBG to um, capital grants and can uh, lead you right in that direction. All right. Well, thank you. You're Again, welcome. thank you. And it's great to see familiar faces here. I see a few of them around. And thank you for letting me take your time. We greatly appreciate it. Oh, thanks so, for coming. Anything else? anything all right thank you yeah thank you thank you, thank you. Good to see you again nice to see you sir i'm now <laughs> at the church and pools yeah <laughs> and now we'll move on i understand we have another presentation here um for amy fogel and the felicity branch she's the felicity branch supervisor and a recognition of cardinal quilters Hello. hi hi guys want to go so to I the podium? I to say that Felicity and Chilo are in, both in Franklin Township. And there are three members of the Franklin Township Historical Society here today. So we love Franklin Townships. All right, I'm going to talk a little. The commissioners met at my branch last month, and they saw our patriotic quilt, which they really liked and kind of wanted it. They can't have it. But they are borrowing it for a month. Um, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about how that quilt came into being. Um, in 2001, I was teaching a crochet class. And we made a cardinal afghan for the Felicity branch, which hung there until last year when it was all discolored. I loved that afghan. But one Saturday, it was rainy and dreary out. And I was looking at that cardinal afghan, and I thought, I want something different. I just want to look at something else sometimes. So I put a sign on our circulation desk that said, Quilters Wanted. And a number of women contacted me and said, I'd love to quilt. So it was a program that I did at the library. The library funded the materials for the first quilt that the later named Cardinal Quilters made. And it was um, a fall-themed quilt. I, I don't quilt. I forgot to say that. I don't quilt. But I did make a square for that very first quilt. And it's beautiful. And um, the quilters did not want to stop after they finished that quilt. Well, the library doesn't have the resources or the funds to pay for all of these quilts. So they decided that they would fund it themselves and continue making these ha lovely hand quilted quilts. Um, we now have at the Felicity Branch four seasonal quilts and the patriotic quilt and one quilt in the children's area. Um, the quilters also do other things. One of the things in the beginning in 2004 that is near and dear to my heart, my mother was director of the YWCA for many, many years in Claremont County. And it was under her leadership that the House of Peace, the Battered Women's Shelter, was begun. And I said to the quilters, you know, my mother at this point had gone into a nursing home, and in order to recognize her, I said, you know, if we're going to make quilts, me not being actually part of that we, maybe we could donate some to the Battered Women's Shelter. Wouldn't it be lovely these women and their children leave their homes, sometimes in the middle of the night, with nothing but their night clothes? 
and they arrive at this shelter, wouldn't it be lovely if there could be a quilt there to welcome those children, something that they could wrap up in and feel comforted. And so the quilters made a number of quilts for the Battered Women's Shelter. They have gone on to do many other things. Um, I am going to let Sabrina, because in 2009 I went to the Williamsburg branch and you know, the quilters kept going. They didn't need me. I knew that all along. But they really didn't need me at all. And they continued. I came back to Felicity almost six years ago. So um, I have been there with the quilters. I have yet to make another square. I've only done one in all these years. Um, I do still teach crochet, though, at the library on occasion. So I'm going to let um, Sabrina talk a little bit about some of the other things that they do. Okay. My name is Sabrina Schnarenberg. The Felicity Cardinal Quilter since 2010. They elected me as president in 2012, um, and they haven't let go of me ever since then. <laughs> um, so we have some beautiful quilts that we've made. We've had some very simple quilts that we've made. We have made 126 quilts. Um, the majority of them um, are the simple quilts, but we give quilts to uh, the Brown County <coughs> Veterans Home for whenever a veteran comes in and his welcome packet, he receives a quilt. Um, the fire and EMS department keeps a stockpile of our quilts for emergencies. Um, we've also given quilts to, uh, we've sold quilts for as much as $1,400 that has been raised for the Pregnancy Resource Center in Brown <coughs> County. Um, our quilts go from beautiful to kind of plain. Um, I am not a part of that quilt. I sure wish I was. Um, our current project that we're working on, which Amy wanted me to discuss, is the In Affinity Project. It helps returning veterans um, and military members with PTSD. Um, that is a project that is near and dear to my heart. Um, in 2005, my husband and I were both stationed in Iraq. We were lifers, going to be in the military for the rest of our lives, and halfway through our second tour, we thought, well, <laughs> huh. <laughs> Maybe it would be nice to uh, settle down in a quiet little community somewhere, maybe get a farm, have a couple children. That sounds really, really nice. Hence how I came to Claremont County and the Felicity area. Um, my husband and I settled down here in 2012. Um, well, we came in 2005. And uh, um, we now have six children. <laughs> Um, plus my stepdaughter, so that makes seven. I brought three of my children here. Um, my family has a tradition of the uh, first generation makes, gets together and makes a quilt for the next generation. I have my great-grandmother's quilt, my grandmother's quilt, well, hold on, two greats, one great, my grandmother, and my mother and I have been working on making quilts for our generation. Making quilts has helped me with my PTSD. It has helped me transition into this community. I came into the Felicity Library and I saw this quilt and I thought there's no way that they will ever accept me and my poor little scraps that I put together. But sitting around talking to these wonderful ladies who give so much to the community, you know, it's allowed me to continue serving my community in the best capacity that I can. You know, we have all cried over these quilts. We have loved making them knowing that they are going to somebody who will love them, even if it is something that is definitely not that quality, if you've seen mine. Um, yeah. Anyway. They are beautiful. They, yeah. they are beautiful. They all come from the heart. Um, I'm so happy that we're a part of this community. You know, this, this has been my dream since 2005. I love this community. I love Shiloh. I'm one of the historical societies. Right! <laughs> you know? But uh, that's all. So, yeah. well, thank you for your service, thank Sabrina, you. and your thank husband. You. Thank, thank you very much. Your turn. <laughs> I'm always going to take advantage of talking about the library, and I hope. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that everyone can get a sense of the resources at, that are available at the library, and how proud we are and thankful to you all for putting our quilt on display and. Um, it's very special. So uh, I just wanted to share that, if, have, have you all heard about maker spaces and 3D printing and button making and screen printing and crafting programs? The Claremont County Public Library has been a part of that for years. And the Cardinal Quilters exemplify that. 
from writers groups to crafting programs to 3D printing, our libraries are places where people come to learn, engage, and build community. And you're just a perfect example of that. So thank you. Um, because of it, it, it being um, a patriotic quilt, I wanted to share our participation in the Veterans History Project. And I brought pamphlets to share about that. The Veterans History Project is part of the American Folklife Center of the Library of Congress. The purpose of that program is to video record interviews with veterans and share those in our library's collection with the Library of Congress and also the veteran gets to keep a copy of the interview. And we've been participating in that program since 2005. And you can call us to make a, re a reservation for setting up an interview. If you're not aware, our mission of the library is to foster lifelong learning by providing resources that inform, programs that engage, and ideas that inspire. I think we do an excellent job of that. And I just wanted to share kind of an update what we're doing this summer to address that. Right now we are in the heat of the moment with summer reading, which is a very important way to impact school readiness. We all know how important it is to have students who do well in school because they foster good um, employees later and, and members of community and society. So we are do our part by offering the summer reading program. It's a great way to combat the, what they're calling now academic regression or the summer slide, if you've ever heard that before. The program is available for all ages and it's a great way to model uh, this crucial skill to others. It's all very important to read and share that with your family and, your, and the, those you're giving care to. We're also reintroducing our educator card to all Claremont County teachers who work in our local schools. We've been in contact with the local school districts, all the private and parochial schools to get teachers cards to help them support their students in their classrooms um, in both online and also with our hard copy materials. And the last thing I wanted to ask about actually was for you guys was uh, the census. The 2020 census is coming up. And I was at recently at a meeting with a neighboring libraries and workforce collaborative group to discuss the census. And I would love to participate in a complete count committee if you're considering the creation of one. I think the library would be a great addition. Kelly Perry. Is okay. Together. All right. And uh, because this year there's a new option to respond online, and the libraries will be a great source for, for online access for that. So thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you for honoring the Cardinal Quilters and the work that they do. And I'm done. I just want to say a big thank you to Rebecca Grappi for twisting your arms and taking <laughs> that did. quilt and bringing it. And I know she did. Yeah. I said, we said, don't come back unless you come back with the quilt. <laughs> Temporarily, we know that. But thank you for sharing it with the thank entire you. community. Yes. And I want to add that on Tuesday night at Chilo Park, the Dreamweaver Storytelling Troupe, of which I am a part, will be performing stories about the night skies. So nice. Anybody who's interested can go online and register for that with Clement Center Park District. Great. I was going to mention that Amy is one of our members of our storytelling troupe, but she does an awesome job. And I also should share that our Miami Township Branch Library has a grant resource database that would be wonderful, possibly for your use. Uh, for nonprofits, so um, check that out. You can make an appointment and come in and take a look at that. It's available in house at our Miami Township Branch Library. And the yeah. library has changed. I just wanted to say that so people know. If you haven't been to one of our libraries lately, you know I would encourage you to do so. It is totally different from back in my days when summer reading was all about the bookmobile, <laughs> and I still remember what the inside of that smelled like. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it all, it, it, and it was a really inviting smell that when you walked in, you knew there were books there and there were lots of things to get your hands on to read. So fantastic. Good. We have a certificate. Who would like to accept that today? Amy. Amy? Okay. Amy, on behalf <laughs> of. <coughs> On behalf of the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, we'd like to uh, give you this certificate of recognition, of recognition. It's our pleasure to acknowledge the skills and dedication of the Cardinal Quilters. We thank you for sharing your talent with the citizens of Claremont County, and it's signed by the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, David Payne, President, Ed, Edwin Humphrey, Vice President, and Claire B. Corcoran, member. And uh, thank you. Please thank accept you this much. on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you.
and we would love to get a picture with you guys and, and with the quilt. I tried to get that quilt out of the Felicity Library with anybody knowing it, but yeah. it didn't work that way. So, you know, recognizing yeah. recognizing Claremont County art, you know, here is is uh, really important to us. So I have five mm -hmm. quilts in Felicity, and that is by far the favorite. Yeah, it is. Everybody that one. So Bring the other two with you. Absolutely. Your kids are going to be in the picture. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll move to our next presentation. Linda Fraley, Claremont County Auditor, is here to talk to us today about the audit report for December 31, 2018, issued on June the 24th by Keep Favor, the Ohio Auditor of State. Linda, thanks for coming in today, thanks talking for, to us. Thanks for having us uh, make this presentation. It's always uh, good to come here and present good news. And But I would be remiss if I didn't uh, add to the last story because um, uh, I go to the YWCA fundraisers in the House of Peace, and um, they, the uh, Cardinal quilt, quilt, Quilters um, donated a, a quilt for a fundraiser. And, you know, and I bought some tickets for it, and I was the proud recipient. I won the, um, I won the quilt. It's in a special place in my house. It's very special because um, Mrs. Napier, who's now on Heaven, was part of that group, and her daughter works for me. So it's, it's, you know, near and dear to my heart for a lot of reasons. But I just wanted to share that. And maybe I could even let you guys borrow it someday. Yeah, if you, right. if, Bring as that long in as tomorrow. You, as, as long as we return promise it? to give it back. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for that talent myself because mm -hmm. I, I don't have it, and I respect those mm -hmm. that do. So I just wanted to share that. Um, and I, I personally and uh, publicly, first of all, want to start this out, even though I'm making the presentation, to realize that, it takes the work of all elected officials and all departments um, to to put this together and and have a, a an audit presentation. The state auditor comes in, looks at our procedures and our internal controls, and um, and I, it sometimes I think make this presentation. I hopefully when they when we call them and say you need this why, I hope that seeing this uh, great audit opinion uh, make them realize that some of the uh, requests that we make um, that they now appreciate it there's there's a reason for that and it's to me it's a thing for all the claremont county citizens um, that show us that we're, we're taking their um, dollars seriously and we're watching over them and you know and and and, and for an outside source to come in and uh and and tell us that it, it really uh is a good is a good feeling for me personally but uh I, I also want to publicly thank uh, Tina Williams and Jennifer Hartley, who are both certified public accountants who work hard because, you know, unlike what people think, the rules are constantly changing. You know, you got new pronouncements and things like that. Um, they put in 40 hours of continued education just to become their license, but that's not some of the, the other training they have to take uh, for the technology. Because of their embrace of technology as the increase uh, and the demands on our office have increased. They have kept um, that the staffing level, uh, lot you know, very evenly for 
for the workload that they have taken on. So I want to publicly thank them for that. Um, and we do submit um, our uh, comprehensive annual uh, financial report uh, to the uh, Government Finance Officer Association. That's a national association. Um, and we've received that um, all during my tenure. Very proud. Um, but I, when I was preparing for this, I know a lot of times I speak accountants. You know, a lot of people <laughs> don't understand what all this means. But, but for everybody who doesn't understand it, a thing like that, we're very proud that um, we're recognized at the state and federal level for doing the for for at the top of the line of doing a good job. And I think as we represent Claremont County, um, we understand the importance. Um, so, and the report is available. Um, you go to ClaremontAuditor.org, and that full report is available uh, for you to see it. You can either get it directly that way, or you go to our website, and it will show you where it's available um, for those who, um, the other accountants in the country who, who get Being excited members. about that stuff. I can always tell those in college that were the accounting majors because they liked it. Some of your marketing majors are required to take an account. You can just look on their faces and know, I don't understand this, and you don't like it. But another thing I wanted to say is because of these internal controls and, and some things that, that, that we do that you don't, uh, that maybe the general public don't realize that um, we, we had a, uh, an email come in and they were trying to change a, a, vet, uh, a vendors where their checks go to. You know, we do a lot of EFTs, you know, automatic, and we have this thing where you don't just take emails or whatever. We checked it, called the vendor. Sure enough, it was fraudulent. There was somebody trying to you know, Certainly. steal this vendor's mm -hmm. thing. And again, this happens kind of every day in our office. I don't think people realize that how hard that our, our clerks and that work to, to, to protect uh, those kind of things. Another thing that's been um, a, a new thing, getting more and more, is we've had, you know, people duplicating, trying to duplicate our checks. And we have a positive pay process. <coughs> and that it, it shows up and then that the bank don't honor them. So I think that those things as technology changes and as people think about more and more of how to um, you know, take advantage of our, of our systems, uh, I just wanted to, again, uh, give, give my staff recognition for how hard they work um, to protect those dollars. And I thank you for your time. I, I just want to tell you that I think the website that you have is outstanding. I've gone to other county websites to see properties, and uh, nothing beats ours. Ours is very easy to use. Uh, if you find, if you go down the street and you find a house that has beautiful flowers, you can find it on her map and tell who lives there. So it it is amazing. It is an amazing website. Thank you very much. And we work hard with that is technology allows us to do more and more to present to our citizens. Uh, we're, we, we work to do that. And thanks for that compliment. Sure. I appreciate it. And Linda, isn't, it, isn't there a move to provide a, a new program that even offers more to the oh, yeah. citizens? Yeah, is it's that, a, yeah, that's it's something a new vendor. Do. Like I said, a lot of things, you know, we're limited. You know, some of our vendors say we're always pushing the envelope because we're asking for things, but it's a new program. It's a Socrata program. And we're, we're, we're working with them now, uh, again, just to uh, to be able to people to go out because it's amazing. I, when I came in here, I'm really dating myself. We had one and a half people just donated to get at returning faxes and things like that. And now the public, when they say how much they can come in here and what they can get off of the website, and uh, we get a lot, a lot of compliments. And you know what? It feels good too when people come in and say that because you always get the complaints. But we get a lot of compliments, and we don't take that for granted, and we do listen. And especially some of the uh, professionals, when they come in, we bring them in there, critique our website, see what you, what you think, because if they can, you know, they can do that. And our realtors uh, will tell us they got to be on their toes when somebody calls, calls them about something, because they know they've already been to our website, and they got to make sure they know at least what that, that prospective buyer makes. So, yep, thank you. I mean, you dated yourself a little bit that. I mean, don't don't tell anybody when you started here that the uh, rotary calculator was still being used. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. He did. There was no fax, right? Yeah. No. The hardest thing was was taking their typewriters away from them. That was a big deal. We don't know how to do that without a typewriter. So, yep, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud of the fact that I've, that I've been able to see the progress and been able to oversee it. I'm real proud of it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
We've moved to our portion of the agenda, item number D, for public participation. If there's anyone here in the public today that would like to participate in this meeting, and then raise your hand to be called upon by the uh, by the president. And all those who would like to participate. You have one. One. That? Yep. I do. I think so. He's going to read yes. something, and then you're. <coughs> I'm looking. I'd call on you. You please approach the podium and state your name and, and your address prior to that. During this time, we've reached that public participation section of the agenda. During this time, the board doesn't answer questions nor engage in debate. The commissioners are not expected to comment on matters brought to the board during this time. Each speaker will speak once and be recognized by the board president before speaking. In accordance with the board's rules, your comments are, are limited to five minutes. Okay, my name is Mary Alexander. I live at 441 Woodwick Court, Union Township, Cincinnati, Ohio. I want to start off by saying I used to be a quilter. And not every quilt is gorgeous, but every quilt brings warmth. So anyway, um, I'm, if some of you may know, I am the proud mother of Christopher Hicks, and I'm even more proud of him for what he's trying to do in our county. And I am here today because I saw that Linda Fraley was going to present this morning. I wanted to see if she addressed the issue or if any of you have asked her a simple question. Who had the statutory authority of auditor from March 1st <clears throat> through March 10th of 2019. You all know that she had retired, resigned, and been terminated on February 28th, 2019, and her new term did not begin until March 11th. In that time, checks were issued with her signature, court filings were made in her name, and scales were sealed under her authority. All of it illegal when she was not even an employee of the county. It involved millions of dollars, taxpayer dollars, and you never appointed an interim auditor, which is your duty under the law. Sadly, I did not hear Mrs. Fraley address this issue or any of you ask her to explain that in public. I also assume you have not asked the state auditor to investigate, and I'm wondering why. Is it a political code in which you look the other way when it regards Ms. Fraley. Last week, you accepted the resignation of engineer Pat Munger, and you appointed an interim in that position. Are there different rules for Linda Fraley than for Pat Munger? I would like any of you to explain to me here and now why 10 days without an auditor involving millions of taxpayer dollars is swept under the rug, but $3,000 over the course of 15 years ends a career for Mr. Munger. I think citizens deserve to hear Ms. Fraley explain that time period. They deserve to know why you never appointed an interim auditor, and they deserve that at least one of you address these questions here and now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else that would like to participate at public participation? Seeing none, I'll officially close the public participation portion of the meeting. Item number E, consent agenda. Board, a consent agenda has been prepared. I know you've had it in advance and had time to uh, review it. Uh, are there any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda for further discussion before we uh, consider a motion? No. None? Hearing none, then I would request a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Make that motion. Second. Been moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Amen. Yes. Item number F, non-consent agenda, starts on page 8. <clears throat> Board of County Commissioners. Recommendation the Board of County Commissioners adopt resolution 106-19, resolving to approve payment in vendors in the revised total amount of $2,167,282.92, as set forth in the BCC approval invoice reports for checks dated July 10, 2019, 
BCC directed prepaid invoice reports or procurement card transaction reports presented by the County Auditor on July 8, 2019 and further authorizing the Claremont County Auditor to issue warrants for the same pursuant to Section 319.16 of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion to pay the bills? I make that motion. Second. It's been moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? None. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Tanner? Item number 16. Recommendation that the Board of Claremont County Commissioners did, did adopt. You vote? Yes. Okay. Right. Got it? I didn't hear the vote. I'm sorry. My it's all right. Ear it's all right. I didn't hear it either, but it's all right. And I don't think the people to the left of me heard it either, but yes. that's good. Yes. Item number sixteen. Recommendation that the Board of County Commissioners adopt resolution number one zero seven dash one nine resolving to approve payment to vendors included on the BCC approval invoice report for checks dated July tenth, two thousand nineteen presented by the county auditor on July 8th, 2019, as reflected in the vendor uh, report prepared by the OMB in the amount of $46.19, and further authorizing the county auditor to issue warrants for the same pursuant to section 319.16 of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mrs. Corcoran. Abstain. Item number 17. Morning. Good morning. Craig Reisner, County Engineer's Office. Item number 17 is a recommendation of Jerry, Jeremy Evans, Acting County Engineer, to execute record plat number 6293149, three <coughs> plats of lots in the town of Van Burenville, um, which more commonly would be known as Laurel. What was that? That's more common. Laurel. 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 The official Laurel. name of Laurel is Van Burenville. I, I, I forget the date, but it is 1800 and, mm -hmm. and something when the. the Why all the roads are that way. Before. Okay. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the purpose of, the re of this replat is to combine new, uh, two lots and create new lot number 21C. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 17. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make that motion. Second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number 18. Item 18 is a recommendation of Jeremy Evans, Acting County Engineer, to execute record plat number 6293150 for the replat in the following lots in Stone Lake Township. It's a replat of a lot in first addition to Patch Subdivision and it's to create a 10-foot private water line easement. This is a private easement between two adjacent property owners. Okay. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 18. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second the motion. Then moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Aye. Yes. Yes. Item 19. Item 19 is a recommendation of Jeremy Evans, Acting County Engineer, to execute record plat number 6293151 for the following subdivision in Miami Township and to further execute the performance and maintenance bond <coughs> as well as a performance bond for sidewalks as surety for same relative to construction of the below listed street. This is Mattingly Falls Subdivision, Section 1A, located in Miami Township. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 19. Do I have a motion for approval? I make that motion. Second. Been moved and it's received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. <clears throat> item number 20. Morning. Morning. My name is Tracy Sellers. I'm here on behalf of Joseph Ellison with the Municipal Court Adult Probation Department. It is upon the recommendation of Joe Ellison, Chief Probation Officer, Claremont County Municipal Court, Adult Probation Department, with the concurrence of Thomas Eigel, County Commissioner, to execute a subsidy grant agreement for the community-based corrections program by and between the County of Claremont, Ohio, and the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction, the Division of Parole and Community Services, Bureau of Community Sanctions, located at 4545 Fisher Road, Suite D in Columbus, Ohio, 43228. For the Community Corrections Act 408 non-residential misdemeanor grant relative to the jail diversion program entitled Standard Probation, 
for and on behalf of the Claremont County Municipal Court Adult Probation Department as the designated implementing agency in the amount of $290,536 with no local match required, therefore effective for the period of July 1st, 2019 through June the 30th of 2021, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and in concert with the grant application for funding herefore submitted online on May the 7th of 2019 by the Claremont County Municipal Court Adult Probation Department with said grant application hereby acknowledged by the Board of County Commissioners in and as it relates thereto. Board, you've heard the reading of, reading of item number 20. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second the motion. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Uh, Tom Eigel is a county administrator. I thought I heard commissioner, but he's the administrator. We're, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, thank you. We, we know. <laughs> we know he is. We know he is. <laughs> Any, anything further? Thank you. Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Ms. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Thank you. Item number 21. Good morning. Morning. I'm Jim Maloney, uh, administrator for the Sheriff's Office. And at the recommendation of Alan L. Edwards, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eichel, County Administrator, to authorize David L. Painter, President of the Board of County Commissioners, to execute the subgrant award agreement. Subgrant number 2018-DL-LEF-5814 LEF by and between the County of Claremont, Ohio, and the Ohio Department of Public Safety, Office of Criminal Justice Services for funding through the Ohio Drug Law Enforcement Fund DLEF program for the project entitled Claremont County Drug Unit in the amount of $115,889.60 with a required cash match in the amount of $38,629.87 to be provided from the 2019-20 annual appropriations for the county sheriff and or to be provided by the county sheriff from the narcotics law enforcement trust fund 2503 for a total project budget of 154 519 47 for the period of 7 1 19 through 6 30 20 20 for and on behalf of the county sheriff of the county of claremont ohio as designated agency or the administration and implementation thereof pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth herein and in concert with the grant application heretofore filed electronically by the county sheriff on or about 12 2018 relative thereto this is our largest uh, grant uh, we have two grants uh, <coughs> spoken about the, those before uh, the LEF is uh, made up of uh, fine money from the state of Ohio and um, our other uh, grant which uh, I'll probably be here in a week or two to talk about um, is the uh, burn grant the JAG grant which is a federal grant okay board you've heard the reading of item number 21 do I have a motion for approval I'll make that motion second it's been moved and received a second any further conversation or discussion roll call Judy Corcoran yes Mr. Humphrey aye Mr. Painter yes Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Item number 22. Uh, the Board of County Commissioners on uh, <coughs> Wednesday, June 26th at about 9.25 a.m. Um, was the recipient of another petition for annexation um, of 12.1096 acres from Williamsburg Township to the village of Williamsburg. It was filed by Michael Muneer, attorney at law, for and on behalf of Susan M. Ellerist, the administrator, but in this instance, the designated agent for the petitioners and comprising a number of different parcels as designated in compliance with section 709.02 of the Ohio Revised Code, pursuant to resolution number 21-03, adopted by the Board of County Commissioners on February 25th, 2003, notification of the date, time, and place of the public hearing was sent to the agent for the petitioners on Wednesday, June 26, 2019, via regular U.S. mail, designating Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, at 11 a.m. local time, in the Office of the Board of County Commissioners, 
as the date, time, and place for the aforestated hearing thereon. As you are very familiar with, the window to set the public hearing is set subsequent to 60 days there from the filing and not later than 90 days, and this is within that time screen. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 22. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussions? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item 23. And on Wednesday, July 3rd, at about 11.36 a.m., Mr. Muneer, attorney at law for and on behalf of Susan M. Ellerhurst, the designated agent for the petitioners of a number of parcels as designated, filed another petition for annexation, this in the amount of 6.4513 acres from Williamsburg Township to the Village of Williamsburg, in compliance with Section 709.02 of the Ohio Revised Code, and pursuant to the previously recognized resolution adopted by the Board on February 25, 2003, notification of the date, time, and place of the public hearing was sent to the agent for the petitioners on Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019, via regular U.S. mail, designated Wednesday, September 25th, 2019, at 11 a.m. local time in the Office of the Board of County Commissioners as the date, time, and place for the aforestated hearing thereon. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 23. Do I have an approval, a motion for approval? I make that motion. Second. It's been approved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number 24. Item number 24 is a recommendation to authorize David L. Painter, President of the Board, to execute the satisfaction of mortgage, certifying that the terms of the mortgages and the promissory notes as they secured as dated have been satisfied and authorized by the county recorder to release the said mortgages of record for the following properties. Um, there's a list of properties here. These are all as they relate to the septic system rehab financing program in concert with the Ohio Development Services Agency Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program. We have a list of properties that have um, satisfied their mortgages and we are going to release those upon approval. Okay. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 24. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second the motion. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> Item number 25. Item number 25 is a recommendation to approve and sign the public official bond number 6011-52835 in the amount of $2,000 for Jeremy Paul Evans, who was duly appointed by the Board of County Commissioners on July 1st, 2019 to serve as the acting county engineer for the County of Claremont, Ohio, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 30502 of the Ohio Revised Code for the term commencing July 1st, 2019 and ending January 3rd, 2021, and subsequent thereto to authorize payment of the premium, therefore, in the amount of $138 to C. Edward Lovins Insurance Company, pursuant to Section 315.02 of the Revised Code. And the public official bond will be, then be filed in the Office of the County Treasurer. Suki, I'm sorry, did you say 02? I thought you said 02 and it's 03. I'm sorry, you're, I may have said 02. 03 is yeah. what it's under. Okay. So item number 25, this was done on 7-1, is that correct? That is. Okay. I would make a motion that we table this issue just for a short period of time until such time that we uh, act on the approval of the minutes from July 1, 2019, okay. and then come back to this item. I would need a second for that I'll motion. Second that. It's been moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Painter? Yes. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Okay. Item number 26. Um, item number 26 is a designation of an appointment to fill a vacancy on the Claremont Transportation Improvement District Board of Trustees. Uh, Commissioner, would you care to table this until we also do? I, I would. Minutes? I'd make a motion that we table item number 26 until we have uh, executed the uh, minutes from the 7-1 meeting. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and received a second. 
Any further conversation or discussion? Yeah, I'm not. Sure. I don't understand why we're why we're waiting for the minutes. The the uh, board met. We accepted, and uh, I don't. We used to have an issue with the auditor where they wouldn't approve the payment of bills until the minutes were approved, and now they no longer do that. So I'm not sure I understand why we need to table these until the minutes are approved. You've yet to ratify the minutes that appointed the acting county engineer and the public official bond that's required there and after, as well as item 26, which is discussion in and as it relates to the appointment as a result of the vacancy created on July 1st of the county engineer from the Claremont County Transportation and Cruisen District Board of Trustees. I understand that. I still don't understand. The, the meeting occurred. Uh, it was done. We haven't approved the minutes. I understand, but I, and I'm okay with it. But okay. I just don't understand. Okay. It's been moved and it's received a second. <coughs> Roll call, Judy. Painter. Yes. Ms. Corcoran. Yes. Humphrey. Aye. Okay. And we will move to. Are there any additions to the agenda? Yes, there are additions okay. to the agenda. Um, we have three add-ons related to uh, various topics. Um, the first one is the water resources bargaining um, agreement. The second one would be the water resources MOU uh, or a county MOU on the, with the Union Township and the TID. And the third is to revise the name of legal counsel firm. And then if we want to add on also the approval of the minutes of July 1st. So we will have four add-ons. Okay. Board, you've heard the uh, description of four add-ons that we have been requested to be added to the agenda. Do I have a motion to add those to the agenda? So moved. I'll second. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Humphrey. Aye. Ms. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. We will take the first to add on is the Claremont County Water Resources Department, a recommendation of Lyle Bloom. Hi, Terry. I'm here to read this motion for Lyle. He's on vacation. So it's the recommendation of Lyle Bloom, Director of Utilities for Claremont County Water Resources Department, with the concurrence of Suki Sheets, Assistant County Administrator, to authorize Linda L. Fraley, a Claremont County Auditor, to adjust the rates of pay for the bargaining unit employees of the Claremont County Water Resources Department pursuant to and in compliance with the collective bargaining agreement by and between the County of Claremont, Ohio and the American Federation of State, County and Municipal Employees, Ohio Council 8, Local 2686, uh, here to 4, ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on June 26, 2019 for the period of January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2021 with said base rate adjustments and merit rates of pay therefore in concert with article 20 entitled wages to be effective as of december 17 2018. board you've heard a uh, reading of the requested resolution do i have a motion for approval i make that motion second been moved and received a second any further conversation or discussion roll call judy corcoran yes Mr. humphrey aye Daniel. yes <clears throat> the second add-on is with the Water Resources Department. The second add-on is a recommendation um, to execute an intergovernmental agreement by and between the Claremont County Board of County Commissioners, the Union Township Board of Trustees, and the Claremont County Transportation Improvement District. This is for the provision of cooperating in the development, coordination, and construction of the Elick Lane Bach Buxton Roadway Improvement Project identified as PID number 90620 located in Union Township with the county contributing an amount not to exceed $140,129 for the cost of oversizing the sewer infrastructure for phase one work as detailed in, in the exhibit. Um, this is for the effective for the period of J July 12th, 2019 through March 30th, 2020. Board, you're, you're, you've heard the reading of the requested resolution. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second the motion. Been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. John Free. Aye. Corcoran. Yes. Painter. Yes. 
just a clarification on that. Yes. Did I mention to authorize Lyle to execute that is what was? They had the affirmation before them and so was as prepared, but that's good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And the third item is a recommendation of Ernie Ramos. This is to authorize Commissioner Painter as president to execute an application to change the outside legal counsel firm name designation conjointly with uh, Vincent Ferris, Claremont County Prosecuting Attorney, for submittal to the Claremont County Court of Common Pleas. And this is for the purpose of changing the outside legal counsel firm name, designation, and address from Montgomery Rennie and Johnson to Montgomery Johnson. Um, in and as it relates to the representation of David Ubel in his capacity as Claremont County Commissioner and the litigation identified as Christopher Hicks versus Claremont County Board of Commissioners in the United States District Court, Southern District of Ohio Western Division, uh, case number 117 CV 00677, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners and as amended joint application with the prosecuting attorney to the Claremont County Common Pleas Court on January 17, 2018, and the entry authorizing employment of outside legal counsel signed by Jerry R. McBride, presiding judge, Court of Common Pleas, Claremont County, Ohio, and filed with Barbara A. Wiedenbein, and Clerk of Court of Common Pleas, Claremont County, Ohio, at 4.12 p.m. on January 17, 2018. Therefore, thereafter, inasmuch as of April 15, 2019, the law firm of Montgomery, Rennie, and Johnson split into the two aforenamed separate firms. Board, you've heard the reading of the requested resolution. Do I have a motion for approval? I make that motion. Second. It's been moved and received a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. And then finally, we have the uh, motion to approve the minutes of the special session of July 1st. And um, do, we have, do we have those? We haven't had a chance to review them. Could we take a chance to review? We can do them after executive, executive. if you want to hold that and the yes. other two tabled items. That would be fine. Okay. Anything else? Then we'll move to item H. Request an executive session pursuant to section 121.22 G1 and G3 of the Ohio Revised Code to first consider the employment and dismissal of one or more public employees and second to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or imminent litigation. Do I have a motion to enter executive session? So moved. I'll second the motion. Been moved and received a second. Roll call, Judy. Humphrey. Aye. Yes. Maynard. Yes. <clears throat> we will move into executive session. We will return and we will conduct further business. Thank you. you can leave. <clears throat> we are back from executive session. No decisions were made and we will continue on with our regular agenda. <clears throat> we added four items. One we deferred, and that item that we deferred was the approval of uh, minutes for the special session that was conducted on July 1, 2019. <clears throat> Board, you have those minutes here in front of you. I would give you some minutes to review them here in session prior to asking for a motion if you do that now. You have? No. Yeah. Here, mm -hmm. I'll get a copy. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Thank you.
I've read them over. I'm ready. And I'd ask for a motion for the approval of the special session minutes of July 1st, 2019. So okay. moved. Second the motion. Been moved and second. Received a second. Do we have any further conversation, clarification, or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Humphrey? Aye. Corcoran? Yes. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> Previously, board, we tabled item number 25. I would ask that item 25 be removed from the table for further consideration. Let me get to that. Do I have a motion? Do I need a motion to bring it back off the table? You do. I make the motion. Second. It's been moved and second. Roll call, Judy. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Hainer? Yes. Item 25, recommendation to approve and sign uh, public official bond number 6011529835 in the amount of $2,000 for Jeremy Paul Evans, who was duly appointed by the Board of County Commissioners, Claremont County, Ohio, on 7-1-2019, to serve as the acting county engineer for the County of Claremont, Ohio, pursuant to and compliance with Section 305.02, the Ohio Revised Code, for the term commencing 7-1-2019 and ending 1-3-2021, and subsequent thereto to authorize payment, the premium therefore in the amount of $138 to C. Edward Lovins Insurance Agency, 122 Water Street, Milford, Ohio, 45150, pursuant to Section 315.03, the Ohio Revised Code. Public official bond is to be filed in the office of the county treasurer. Do I have a motion to approve Jeremy's bond? Make that motion. Second. It's been moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. And board, we previously tabled item number 26. I would ask that item number 26 be taken from the table and brought back into regular session for consideration. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second the motion. Then moved and second. Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number 26. Board of County Com Commissioners designation of appointment to fill the vacancy on the Claremont County Transportation Improvement District Board. I'd like to make a motion that we, that we appoint Jeremy Evans to that position since he is the acting county engineer and he fills the seat of the engineer. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and second that Jeremy Evans would feel the, fill the vacated seat on the Transportation Improvement District. Do I have any further conversation or discussion? No. Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Do we have any further items to come before the board today? No, sir. Hearing none. You're back to item I on the agenda. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. That's right. Item number I will move right through the agenda. County staff elected official discussions. Do we have anyone here today from our county or staff or elected officials that would like to discuss any items here in front of the board today? Hearing none, I'll move on to item J for member comments. Board members, you have any, any comments today? No comments. No comments, thank you. None? Okay. Then I would ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. Then moved and second. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. That concludes our meeting for July 10th, 2019. Thanks, thanks to all those this morning that, that attended the meeting, especially all those new employees that were introduced to, the quilters in Felicity, Ohio. Uh, Claremont County Art is, uh, it, it's really nice to have a display here within the boardroom and I think it uh, really spruces it up a little bit, don't you, Judy? It certainly makes it patriotic more so than it already is as a political subdivision. You bet. Well, again, thank you for attending, and we'll see you next week.